Welcome to Women Kicking Glass, the only radio show on OC Talk Radio dedicated to empowering women to be the best leaders they can be in any endeavor they choose. Patty Grimm is our host and interviews top women in a variety of fields to help women grow, learn, and lean in together. Patty has over 25 years of experience in primarily male-dominated fields in senior-level management positions. Patty is the owner of Advantage Training Limited, an organizational leadership team training company. She recently released her new book for women called Quiet Women Never Changed History. Be strong, stand out, and stand up. With the subtitle, Let's Go Kick Some Glass. Let's do it. Let's go kick some glass here this morning. Welcome to our uh, second episode here, Women Kicking Glass. Patty, or you came back. I came back. I can't wait to. I've got a lineup all the way through February, and we're looking for more topics. So if you're out in the audience and you're thinking of you'd like to be on the radio show and about your business, about your charitable organization, please email me at pattygrim at live.com. And that's P A T T I E G R I M M at live.com. And I'll happy to have you on the show, feature your charity or organization. My passion has, has, for more than 25 years has really been empowering women to be the best they could be in any career they choose and at any age. And so, as the, my commercial mentioned, my book is out on Amazon. And it's really a how to book about how to be a great woman leader, how to stand up, how to be strong, and how to stand out. I've got an outstanding guest this week, and Lorraine, Lorraine <laughs> Gilbert. Sorry, Southern Accent does come out. Uh, and she's going to talk to us about her business, but also about wealth management and how to prepare for 2016, or to, how to end 2016 strong, but also how to prepare for it. And we're going to have to send everybody to see the picture of it, because not only is she an outstanding guest, but she's the first one to come in with her own little uh, uh, assistant. Trolley. Uh, her trolley. Her <laughs> trolley that came in. She, I mean, that's dedicated. She had foot surgery, and she comes in anyway here. Absolutely, that's absolutely. Right. We tried to work it around when she was going to be in the somewhat of a she could walk she could walk in so i'm going to read a little bit of her bio because it's so impressive and when people read my bio or introduce me at conferences or when i give speeches i always look at them and laugh because i think it was written either by my mother for my mother my father or i look up in heaven and thank them for everything they did for me to help me be a strong and powerful woman leader but she brings uh, more than 25 years of experience in creating successful wealth strategies for her clients i'll have her tell a little bit more about herself but she's been a private practice as wealth manager since 1997 she is founder and president of WealthWise Financial Services, which offers services and investments in securities to advisory services to customers throughout her, her area. She's on the board of NABO, which is how we got connected, which is National Association of Women Business Owners. If you own a business, you need to join NABO. It's an incredible organization of women helping women uh, to be the best that they can be. She was recognized as Woman of the Year by NABO, which is outstanding because there are amazing women in this organization. And the thing that was just really blew me away as I was highlighting her bio was I highlighted almost every line. But she's recently been appointed to the Trump Small Business Advisory Council and will chair the 2017 Orange County United Way Women's Fund, um, their breakfast benefiting at-risk children. So this is incredible, Lorraine. I mean, Lorraine, so Thank you. so happy you came to see us today with your with your cast in your little trolley that's Thank got a nice so little much. fuzzy thing to keep it <laughs> keep it soft. So just maybe start out kind of the first question just to get going is tell us a little bit about you, your background, how you got to where you are. We'll talk about women businesses, wealth strategies, and then some of your success things. Great. Thanks so much for having me here today. And, you know, I started out my career in wealth management, but working for a company, as many people do, graduating from college, I interviewed and I started with Fidelity Investments, which is a great firm, and grew and learned about the business there. And then I worked for a company selling retirement plans in Southern California, and I reached a ceiling where I was. Yeah. And my boss told me there was no room for a promotion. And that's when I knew it was time to start my own business. And that's what happened. 1987, I started my own practice and have been helping individuals and corporations ever since with their wealth management and financial planning needs. Yeah. Similar thing happened to me. I worked for a major IT company, and literally they said to me, if you really want to do what you want to do, you can't do it here, but if you leave the company, we'll hire you back to do that work as a consultant. And I kind of looked at him sort of strangely and thought about it and took a four-month sabbatical and came back and said, thank you very much. I'll take my package. I'll go find my own company again, and I'm still doing that work for that company as well as others. So what are some of the biggest 
challenges for women business owners that you see today and the biggest opportunities? Yes. So I do sit on the executive board for Nabo National. Which is great. And so we have the opportunity to talk to women business owners across the country and really get a feeling for what are the challenges and what are the opportunities that they face. I would say the biggest challenges that I hear about from our women business owners are still access to capital being one, Mm -hmm. trying to figure out, women trying to figure out where do they get the capital in order for them to grow their businesses. The next is healthcare costs. Uh, as we all know, healthcare costs have just grown astronomically, and it hurts the woman business owner. The third thing I would say is there's quite a bit of concern about the increase of minimum wage and how that's mm-hmm. going to impact mm-hmm. uh, hiring decisions as well as current employees. And then finally, I'd say that regulations, unnecessary and unreasonable regulations that impede business growth. So those would be on the challenge side. On the opportunities, what's interesting about women business owners is overall what we see is that women business owners are very optimistic currently. Yes, Yes, that's not surprising. There was a study recently done in 2016 that showed that 54% of women expected revenues to increase over the next 12 months compared to their male counterpart Uh, business owners where only 48% of them expected their revenues to grow. So what we see is that women right now tend to be more optimistic about their growth. Same thing in the next five years, 60% of women business owners expect their revenues to grow in the next five years and only 52% of men. So isn't that interesting that that women tend to be uh, right now on the more optimistic side? Well, that's interesting because even in the corporate world, the Gallup organization, as many of you know from all the elections, do a lot of the research on the election and predicting who won, which obviously they were wrong. Um, but they also do a lot of research into employee engagement and uh, things like that. And so they measure, and women are more engaged at work than men. Same kind of statistic. Um, they're finding that, especially with younger workforces, they're wanting to work for a woman because they have more, they do more to develop the, the millennials of the organ, of the world who are looking for development. In fact, I just saw something in the register this morning that they ranked the top 25 things people are looking for at work. Pay was 22nd out of 25. Wow. Everything else was opportunity to develop, had a cause. So women were more optimistic than men in, in, in businesses, but also in the corporate world. So that's very interesting. It is. That's very interesting. So what are some of the opportunities? So the opportunities that that women see is just that they can grow their business. Yeah. You know, that they, they see the opportunity to continue to grow, that they feel that they are able to kind of break that glass ceiling because women business owners can create their own yeah. their own future. In yeah. a sense. So I'd say that's what those are the opportunities that they see for continued growth. And what I'd say is, regardless of the economic environment, I think that what women business owners see is that because they're running their own companies, they can control quite a bit. Yeah. I mean, there are things that are out of our control, but there are things that we can control awesome. as well. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Well, thanks. So what specific financial topics are women business owners asking you about or asking you to help them address? The number one need that I hear is to help women business owners reduce their tax liabilities. The good news is that women business owners are doing very well in their business. I mean, what I'm seeing with clients is Mm -hmm. that some of them are having the best years they've ever had. That's great. Which is great. And then at the same time, they need to manage their tax liabilities. So we help them with those strategies. The next thing I would say is that With uh, what we see, we see quite a few women business owners wanting to exit their business in the next one year, three year, five year time frame. Mm -hmm, And mm -hmm. so they want help in figuring out what that looks like. So those would be the top two things that I ask. I see women business owners asking me to address regarding their finances. Yeah. And this will be another plug for NABO. So join NABO OC. It's a great group. We're both part of it. Well, one of the things is you'll find when you're there is if you're in a situation when you're in a partnership or you want to do your business, you simply look around the room at NABO and say, who has somebody who can help me create a partnership agreement? Who can help me do an exit strategy? And I guarantee you there is somebody in the room who knows somebody who will refer you to a specific 
person, usually a woman, who can help you address those things. A lot of women are buying franchises. One of our good friends, Janet, is a franchise tax a franchise attorney, and she helps women who want to buy franchises. If you want to buy a yogurt franchise or a spa franchise, there's somebody there who will help you. And if they can't, they will find somebody that does. Absolutely. They find somebody just does. So how are you helping um, some of the millennials meet some of their financial challenges? Because they're pretty much the th- stuff I saw said they're not saving. They're not thinking about what happens when I'm 30, 40, 50, 60, right? They're thinking about today. So what are you doing with Help Home Millennials? We are really excited to make the announcement today, first Woo-hoo! on your radio Yay! show, that we are launching an advisor-enhanced robo-platform. Now, that might sound like Chinese to some people. That sounds like, like sci-fi, that mean, like Star right? Wars. <laughs> but it is, it, it's a, such an exciting time for us. So it is a, an online solution for especially millennials who are able to go in and invest with as little as $5,000 and have an advisor, i.e. me, my office, there for them. But it's all done online. And so it's really addressing the millennials that want to do things on their own. They want to do things online. Um, They would like to invest. They may not have as much money to invest, right? So it's we're one out of only out of out of fifteen thousand offices nationwide. We're one out of fifty that have been chosen to launch this robo platform. Awesome. And um, so yes, it's a um, it is an algorithm based platform that takes the money and allocates it properly based on their age, based on their risk tolerance. People go online. That is great. Right. So you can email us at www.robo <laughs> at wealthwisefinancial.com. www.robo at wealthwisefinancial.com. And this next week, we're going to have the link available on our website where people can go on directly and start investing. So it is really exciting. That is exciting. So I'll have to refer my son who, when he graduated from college, we um, gave him some stock in that IT company that I worked for that's in Seattle. So when he graduated from college, we gave him some stock and it's worth about $5,000 at this point, maybe a little bit more, a little bit less, depending on what happened today in the market. Right. Um, but we should encourage him to contact you and work. He's in, he's in Portland right now, but we can still contact him. Well, and that's him. the thing. We're, we, we can... We're available nationwide right. for people who want to be, able right. to, to be able to invest. And the great thing about this robo-platform is it is a hybrid platform, the best of both worlds, meaning most robo-platforms do not involve an advisor. No. So it's only just going online without an advisor. And in this way, you can still have robo, plus you get an advisor. Yeah. Yeah, so, really that's outstanding. Yeah. That's outstanding. And the interesting thing is that so fits the millennials because I'm doing research for it another does. book on the generation gap between millennials, baby boomers, and, and uh, Gen Xers. And one of the things is that they've grown up around uh, doing everything on their phone. We grew up maybe right. maybe we sort of grew up with a computer. We got into computers, but they surf on their phone. We surf on our computer. Everything they do is something that's very self service. They don't want to actually probably individually talk to somebody. So that's a fantastic, Absolutely. fantastic thing. So on the opposite end of the scale right now, so baby boomers are more than 50% of the workforce. They're also more than 50% of the voting population. So they are our future. So we need to address millennials in anything we do in our business. We need to Correct. think like a millennial, hire a millennial, be patient. They're going to ask a lot of questions. They're going to always want to know why, but we need to get those into our workforce so we can help them. So on the opposite end of the scales, or in the age scale, how do you counsel somebody who's nearing retirement? Baby boomers like me. Right. Right, where we're thinking, what do I do next? I'm gonna, my kids tell me I'll never retire. Well, the statistics are that 10,000 people a day are reaching age 65 for the next 10 years. So it's definitely something that everyone needs to think about because people are retiring. They're getting to retirement age. Yeah. And so the first thing that I counsel people is to know your number, right? Know what you need in order to retire. And that number is different for everyone. Depending upon longevity, how long you're going to live, your lifestyle, how much you spend, and then your risk tolerance. And so, first of all, find out that number. 
You can do that through doing some good financial planning. The next thing is once you know your number, you need to close the gap between the assets that you currently have and what you really need. And so there are quite a few very simple techniques in trying to maximize the amount that you have for retirement in a short period of time. The first is just max out your retirement plan. If you're 50 years old or older, you can put in $24,000 a year in a retirement plan. 24000 Yeah, 24000 And then if you're married, your spouse could also put in another 24000 That's 48000 If you own a business, there's ways for us to get hundreds of thousands of dollars into retirement plans. So for those people who are business owners, you can contribute much more potentially. So we have ways that we can put a second retirement plan plan in place next to that first retirement plan and potentially get in, like I said, hundreds of thousands of dollars a year. The next thing I would say is that people need to take care of their long-term health care needs. And the thing about that is that yeah. the two biggest costs in retirement are health care and taxes. <laughs> Can you believe that? Which are, by the way, remember earlier I said the two the two areas that people ask me about are Taxes and healthcare costs, right? Right, so exactly. Those things don't go away in retirement. And so people need to plan for that. And there are great ways to plan for potential long term care needs. There are now these new hybrid plans for long term care benefits. So, in addition to traditional long term care insurance mm-hmm. products, mm-hmm. we also now have other products that are based on an annuity or based on life insurance that will give people a long-term care benefit. So, of course, we're happy, you know, to talk to people about what those look like. Uh, The other decision that people have to make is, what are they going to do about their home? Right? Yeah. Yeah. People oftentimes want to downside Mm -hmm. close to retirement or at retirement. Maybe that means moving from a larger house to a smaller house. Maybe it means moving from a house to a condo. Maybe that means moving to another city or state. So a lot of things to consider when it comes to your housing. But that's important when it comes to figuring out when can you retire? And then finally, what I'd say is make smart Social Security decisions because Social Security benefits, it's a one-time decision. And once you make that determination of when you're going to take your Social Security benefits, you can't really go back and change it. So. Yeah, yeah, that, that's an issue for a lot of people that are in my age group. I mean, everything you mentioned from housing to downsizing, sometimes the you know, my husband and I have been married for 34 years. We, we just completed our 15th move in 34 years. Oh, my goodness. What? <laughs> Congratulations, I'd say. <laughs> we are pros and moving. I, I can so. tell you that. We can do it more efficiently than anybody on the planet. Uh, and yet we've, we have downsides. We've continued to downsize. And now we're in a single-story condo in a wonderful community in Laguna Niguel. Single-story, no sales for my husband. Um, just a wonderful place. Perfect. And we continue to downsize. You know, and it's hard for some people who have lived in the same home for a long period of time, whether it be five years, ten years, or their entire marriage and their children grow up there. Absolutely. It's hard for them to give up those memories. It is. But you can take the memories with you, right? You can. And, 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 and don't wait too long to don't go wait through too all long. those items because give them to I your see kids that now. quite a bit. I see people in their older years, yeah. right, as they get older, trying to sort through a lot of stuff. Yeah. So, yeah. You know, that's a good thing about moving. You kind of have to go through it every time. Yeah. Yeah. So, we're, right? we're clean. <laughs> <laughs> Other than the fact I have 179 Santas that have traveled with us, not, oh only, my goodness. not only from Seattle to Asia, but from Asia back to Seattle, from Seattle down to here. I and so love it. We, it's been kind of a I a have crazy... one Santa. You have 179. <laughs> yeah. I just, I just got one more yesterday at a women's breakfast. Uh, and the other thing is, you know, just the whole idea of when do I retire? If you look at, okay, so if, if, when I retire, if I retire at 65 versus 70, what's the difference of that? And what's, if it's I. Huge. It's huge. You know, when you're looking at Social Security, yeah. one thing to note is that Social Security increases by 8% per year. Right. Between ages 66 and 70. That's a 32% increase if you wait until age 70. Wow. And so, you know, wow. think about it. Making 8% on your money. Right now, that's really good. That's that's so, pretty good. That's that's very very good. So I would say for people who can wait to wait as long as possible before they start receiving Social Security. Of course, right. they need to look at 
everything. There are nuances about Social Security. They need to talk to a financial advisor because we know the ins and outs of how to maximize those Social Security benefits. It depends right. if you're married, divorced, widowed, etc. So there are a lot of things to consider. But for many people, waiting until age 70 is the right decision. Great. Great. Well, thanks for all of that. We're going to take a short commercial break. And we're going to come back and we're going to keep continue on because we've got a lot to talk about. You're, you're, you've been fantastic. You have so much helpful information. I, I'm, I'm using all this myself. I'm taking right. notes here. If you hear a little scribbling, that's me taking notes. So we'll take a quick commercial break and we'll come back. Imagine what it would feel like to lose everything. Your job, your home, your family, your dignity. This has happened to thousands of the men, women, veterans, and young adults we serve at Working Wardrobes. What do we do to help? We provide career development services, life skills workshops, job skills training. We provide the perfect interview outfit, and we get clients placed in jobs. Call Working Wardrobes, 714-210-2460. Donate, volunteer, invest, hire. When it comes to pioneers in their respective industries, we all know the Apples, Starbucks, and Trader Joe's of the world. In the realm of recruiting, Decision Toolbox is the industry's best-kept secret. With 90% of their business from referrals and repeat customers, for over 20 years, Decision Toolbox's U.S.-based team of recruiters, sourcers, professional writers, quality personnel, and tech support has perfected a Six Sigma approach to talent management. No matter the size of the project, Decision Toolbox delivers incredible results. A cost per hire less than half of what contingency firms charge. With the winning candidate presented in an average of 14 days. All with a 12-month candidate warranty. With results like that, Decision Toolbox won't be a secret for long. Visit us at www.dtoolbox.com for more information. And now back to Patty and her guest. This is Patty Grimm with Women Kicking Glass and with my wonderful guest, Lorene Gilbert, who owns WealthWise Financial Management Solutions, which is a wonderful company. We're going to continue our conversation about things that women need to be aware of for their finances. I'm specifically talking about 2016 is like right around the corner. I mean, Christmas is only two weeks away, and 2016 is right around the corner. Are there some financial things that women should know about? for closing out 2016 or things they need to think about for the end of the year? Absolutely. So at this point, you know, we are closing 2016 and about to go into 2017. So two things. I'll focus first on 2016, what people can do before year end. Great. And then 2017, what should you look for Perfect. at that point? So I'd say there's still time in 2016 to take advantage of some important tax deductions that would help women business owners. Really? Yes, there are. And um, we are busy at the end of the year because, (laughs) uh, for instance, we're setting up right now a cash balance plan for one of our clients who owns a business with over 60 employees. So, you know, even a, a company that has 60, 70, 80, 100 employees can benefit or as small as one or two employees can benefit from this type of program. And that's the plan where somebody can put in, you know, $100,000, $200,000 or more. So people could look into that before year end. The other thing is, Philanthropic contributions at the end of the year. Don't forget about that. That is a great right. way to um, maybe e- even pre-fund some of the things that you want to give in 2017 if you need an extra tax deduction in 2016. So as you know, I'm chairing the Women's Philanthropy Fund Breakfast, right. May 10th of 2017, and that does benefit women and children, and it's through Orange County United Way. So what we've done, we just had a big drive to ask our women, do you want to make your contribution now before the end of the year, or maybe even do half of your contribution now and half of it next year? And that way you're pre-funding some of that contribution, but you get the tax deduction this year. So those would be a couple things that I would think about before year end uh, as far as, you know, reducing tax liability. As far as looking into 2017, this is the time of New Year's resolutions, right? Yeah. So Lose 20 pounds, save more money. Exactly. <laughs> take better care of myself. So what I would say <laughs> to women is think about your spending plan for next year and think about your savings plan for yes. next year. So those are the two biggies. So 
I don't like to say budget. I say a spending plan because nobody like likes that. the word budget. It makes you feel like somehow you're missing out on something. Right. But when you think of it as a spending plan, it's get, okay, what do I get to spend money on and how much can I spend? And we can help people with that kind of spending plan uh, scenario as well as a savings plan of how much can I really save this next year? And we have creative ways of helping people figure out through their spending plan that they may be able to save more money than they may have thought that they could. Yeah. And what I would say is take the time and make the investment to do some financial planning. Mm-hmm. And it can be as little. We have financial plans that start as low as $500. And oh, that's as good mu- to know. Up to $2,500. So really for a nominal cost yeah. of somebody putting in an investment can help them see how much more they can save and frankly, how they might be able to even spend more than they think. Yes. Yeah, it's, it's funny when you say people don't like the word budget. I also say, you know, people don't like the word diet because the first three letters right. in diet are die. Yes. <laughs> So we want to have a health plan, a spending plan, and a savings plan. And I heard somebody say, you know, start small. You know, start with five dollars. Start with small with your savings plan, and just sort of build up to it. You'd be surprised how much you could possibly actually save. So, absolutely. You know, focusing on the on the women's side of things, what are some of the biggest financial mistakes women make? I'm so glad you asked that because I've made every one of them. Well. Hey, we all have. And, you know, some of these come from my own life experience, right? So what I try to do is help women not make some of the mistakes that are common. Um, The first one I would say is don't wait to buy a condo or a house until you get married, right? Too many women think, okay, I'll just wait. Tomorrow, tomorrow, tomorrow. tomorrow. And I would say to women, Buy your own condo, buy your own house, and then if and when you get married, keep that condo or house, rent it out, always have that as a fallback if you ever needed to move back. Plus, it could be a great rental income for you. So that's one thing. That's great advice. I love that. Another one is, another mistake is spending more than she can afford on personal care. Now, we all love our clothes, our hair done, our cosmetics, our nails done, our massages, right? And the list goes on and on and on. And believe me, we all love those things. Add it up each month what you're spending and you would be shocked. It is unbelievable. I need to go do so that. So it's, you know, looking at what is a necessity versus what is a real want and desire, right? And then not saying you can't have any of those, but sometimes it's picking and choosing. I'll tell you in my, for my own my own life is that I wanted to start getting those eyelash extensions, right? But that was <laughs> one more cost to my <laughs> monthly spending plan. And so what did I do? I cut back on how many times I went to get my nails done. So sometimes it's just yeah. a little bit of a trade-off of saying, okay, I really want to do this. Let me see how I can cut back a little bit over here. So it yeah. doesn't mean you have to be deprive yourself of everything, but that that's another mistake that I see. Another one that I see is certainly not saving enough for retirement. Mm-hmm. And so back to that retirement back thing. Back to the retirement, you got to start all along the way. And what people used to think that 10% of your income was the right number to save, well, no longer is that the number. And the reason is really? people are living longer, especially women. Women yeah. live longer than men still. So women need to save even more than men. Yeah. So really looking at a 15 to 20% of your income to be putting away for retirement is the way that you know you need to think about. Another mistake that I see is women going through a divorce and not changing their lifestyle Soon enough after that divorce, people get used to the lifestyle that they've led. And unfortunately, in a divorce situation, many times both parties have to adjust their lifestyle. Yeah, because most of of us are dual incomes. Right. So somebody's income is gone, whether it's the man or the woman. And you've got to figure out, how am I going to now live within this new set of means? And what I see, unfortunately, is women have a harder time adjusting their lifestyle than men do after a divorce. Really? So, yes, they tend to stay in a house too long that they can't afford. 
Oh. They tend to continue spending the money that they used to on all of those items that I just mentioned earlier. Exactly. And so what I try to encourage women to do is, you know, rip off that Band-Aid and adjust your lifestyle sooner than later because you don't want to go through a divorce settlement or proceeds too quickly or you don't want to become you know, house poor where you don't have anything but a house and nothing else. So those are some huge mistakes that I see for women and that I try to help counsel women to to make some of those changes. And I like the idea of making trade-offs, I think. And and I may go and do this because I've got, I don't do this as well as I'm I'm sure my husband who's listening will will be saying, oh, yes, she's right. But actually adding up what I spend on things. But one of my trade-offs, one of my simple trade-offs is I love pedicures. And on top of which I have... Um, something with one of my feet where I need to have a pedicure and I can't do it myself. Um, right. But I do my own nails, so I don't get manicures, but I buy that gel stuff at the grocery store or the, or the uh, drug store, and I do my own little simple gel thing, and I keep my nails relatively short. So I give up manicures and having fake nails for, for getting a pedicure, and I try and spread it out over a couple of weeks. So I'll even when it starts to look a little bit bad, I'll touch it up myself. And then I'll maybe go an extra week before I get the pedicure again. So you were talking about divorce and one of the things, interesting statistic, that in Orange County, 60% of the marriages end up in divorce. That seems kind of high, and I don't know what the nation average is, but 60% seems pretty high. Very high. How can women protect themselves financially before the divorce, Right. during the process, and then even after? Right. Well, one of the things I'd say is before getting married to seriously consider a prenuptial agreement. And prenuptial agreements are there to actually protect people and to provide for people. Both parties. Both parties. It's not a negative. It's a positive. And that way, what I always say is that takes money out of the equation. It takes money out of a decision to get married. And um, and by doing that proactively and keeping separate property assets, it actually can encourage people to go ahead and get married and not feel like, right. oh, wait, I can't because I'm worried about my finances. So I would say that's the first step. The other thing, as I mentioned before, not only buying your own home, but keeping your own home. Right. And what you do after you get married... It would be, you know, hopefully keep that property and keep it as a separate asset. And then you can still buy another property together. Another thing that I tell people in um, marriages is to each have your own accounts, each have your own checking accounts, and then have a joint account. And okay. that way you have good some joint advice. money to spend, and then you each have your own money that you can spend. And that way people feel like they have freedom right. around financial decisions. Um, good idea. Yeah. Great idea. Good. And it's interesting, I was thinking about the fact that so many people that maybe have been divorced are now going to, in the process, they've met somebody, they've fallen in love again, they want to get married, they might be in their 40s, 50s, 60s, they've got children to think about, their inheritance, and the idea of having a prenup. Um, it's a positive thing to say when something happens to one of us that my assets, my personal things go to my kids versus his kids. You know, you bring up children. That's a great point because in a in a marriage, especially in a blended marriage right. where you, you might have you might each have children or one may have children the other doesn't, life insurance becomes an important planning tool. Oh, really? And the reason is it's the least expensive way to replace wealth, in a sense. Okay. So let's say you have a man and a woman getting married, and let's just say the man has children and the woman does not, and the man wants to make sure his children ha- receive an inheritance. Right. But the new wife is, what about me? Yeah. And I want to be protected. So insurance policies can be bought for the children So that they get the same amount of wealth that they would have had there not been a wife in place. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And then the wife could receive an inheritance or vice versa. But that way, everyone is taken care of. And I like the quote that you said, you take money out of the equation with the prenup, with all these kind of great suggestions you have as you take money out of the equation and then it doesn't become that extra source of tension that might lead to the next divorce. Exactly. <laughs> Hopefully not. Exactly. The next divorce. Right. Great. So, you know, how does the recent election how are how does the recent election 
If you could predict with your goal, if you're with your crystal ball here in the in our studio, how does the recent election impact women kicking glass? You mentioned the the fifteen dollar an hour pay wage increase potentially, but how does it affect women in the corporate world or you know in owning their own businesses? Well, I think it's very good for business. I mean, the bottom line is, I think we're going to see tax reform this next year that will actually take place that will lower corporate tax rates and that will ultimately help corporations feel confident to spend uh, with capital expenditures. Ultimately, all of that will help their bottom line and ultimately what that means is that earnings increase. With that, the stock market is doing pretty good. It has been doing well, right? So we actually think that there's the possibility for the bull market to be extended longer than we would have thought. So we are in a late stage bull market run. We've been in this, you know, yeah. for quite a while now. And people are always wondering, when is it going to end? When is it going to end? But if we see regulations going down and we see taxes going down, we have the possibility for business owners to do even better, corporations to do better. And that helps everyone. Yeah. That's great. So I am so curious and and so, um, I guess, admiring the fact that you're on this Trump Small Business Advisory Council. What what do you? I know it. I know it's new for next year. But what do you know about it so far? What's your role going to be? How can we help you in that role? Yes, it is exciting. So we have 18 people on our Trump Small Business Advisory Council representing the country. So we wow. are 18 all in- people out of 50 states. There's only 18 Correct. of you? Correct. There's oh my 18 gosh. of us. So we cover a large territory and I'm happy to be um, in California, the person wow. really representing us here on the West Coast. So it is uh, a great honor to be on that advisory council and we are the voice of small businesses to to the Trump administration, and we've already come up with uh, the most important things for small business owners to be addressed in the first 100 days. The, the items that I listed at the beginning of our show right, are the right. items that business owners are concerned about. And so uh, we've already received thank yous from the uh, the administration on what we've done so far, and uh, we look forward to working with the administration going forward on small business concerns. That's great, and you're being proactive before even before even the inauguration or anything Absolutely. happens. You're actually going to forward going forward with solutions, not with complaints and problems. Right. Which is one of my advice. One of my things I tell women is, you know, in, when you're in a situation, is don't go in with complaints and problems. Go in with here's the situation and here's some proposed solutions. So go in and be a positive problem That's solver, right. not somebody who goes in and complains about well things aren't right. So what are you going? What are you proactively doing to make a difference? So how can the average radio listener or the average person, how can we send our issues or get information into this committee? Is there a website we go to? Is there well, anybody some way- can email me directly? Or you make it a lot of emails. A call <laughs> and our info at wealthwisefinancial.com. That will get to me, and our phone number is 949-748-1177. So either an email or a phone call, I'd love to hear people's interests, concerns, solutions uh, for small business, because I'll tell you, I'm very encouraged with the appointees so far, with people in the administration who are results-oriented, people from business backgrounds, including our newest small business administration appointee. Linda a woman, McMahon, a, a woman, yes, who has a strong business background, growing her company from 13 people to over 800 people, and wow. those are the kinds of people we need yeah. in government, helping find solutions on how government can partner with the private sector and help the private sector, not be an impediment to the private right. sector. Right. And a lot of people may not know this, uh, and I found about about it recently because I was actually working with a client here. His, he's probably more of a mid-sized business than a small business, but there are tax credits that you can get if you're a small business st- who's willing to stay in California and Correct. hire new employees. There Absolutely. are some tax credits, tax you, credits available. You, can, you can get to, be, to help you stay in the state of California and if you're going to stay in California and increase your staff. I don't know the percentage and specifics, and you probably know a lot more. Right. But you and can look it up. Been, yes, it's been in place over the last couple of years. Right. And uh, it was a good initiative to help business owners 
increase their employee count. So, yes, ask your accountant about those yeah. credits that you can get. And you can find great accountants at Novo. Yes, you can. <laughs> We have Absolutely. great accountants, great interest. I want to circle back to one of the first comments you made, and then I want to close out with maybe some advice you would give to women business owners and advice to just women in general, so your sort of words of wisdom you'd like to pass along. But you mentioned one of the biggest challenges for small businesses, access to capital. Mm-hmm. Is there something women specifically can do to get access to capital to start their own business if they want to start a franchise? Um, they want to buy the yogurt land, which my, we looked at at one point in time, or you want to buy a, a chain spa at Massage Envy, whoever it happens to be. Um, is there certain things women can do from that perspective? Yes, and here's what I'll tell you. Too many women business owners use personal capital mm-hmm. to start their business. And that's one of the mistakes that women make versus Great. their male counterparts. Men don't do that. They know they to go, go get out money. and get money. Right? So I want to encourage women business owners to access the capital that is out there through banking institutions, and it is available, or through the SBA, which is another possibility. So learn about those programs through the SBA and through your local uh, business bank. Right. So, and I would. I would say my preference is to work with community banks in the region yes. because the the community banks really are yeah. pro business and they're pro women business owner. Right. So uh, we find the best success for our clients is to go to those local community banks who will work with you as a woman business owner Mm -hmm. to access the capital and to grow your business. Yeah. There's some amazing, great community banks in Orange County and in in California that I could rattle off a whole name, a whole bunch of them, but I don't want to leave anybody out. But there are a lot of community banks that aren't the big banks that are more difficult to deal with. And that's one of the things that we actually help our clients with. Um, Our clients rely upon us. That's great. To help them. And we become a great referral source for our clients, whether it's bankers and CPAs and estate planning attorneys. And that way we form a team together to yeah. help them, us from the wealth management side, and then the, all these other disciplines so right. that our business owners have a team. And that's what I would say when you get to, you know, words of wisdom, yeah. have your team in place, have your financial team in place. All those people that I just mentioned, you need your business banker, you need your wealth manager, right? So, so, so you need con- us, you need con- your banker, <laughs> yeah, contact us, and then have a banker, have an estate planning attorney, and have a great CPA. You've got to have all of those in place to grow and build a business. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. What about any other advice for maybe young women sort of growing up? Sure. Sort of you've, you've, you, know, you and I have been around 25 plus, plus, yes. plus, plus, plus years, so yes. any words of advice? I'd say get a mentor. A mentor is the best way for a young woman entrepreneur to learn and it could be it doesn't have to be in your industry it could be cross industry and and back to Nabo. Nabo has a great mentoring program right or find somebody that you admire i i I mentor younger Mm -hmm. i do too female advisors and try to help them along the path and so I would say to those women who have been in business a while, be willing to be a mentor. And yes. for those who are younger, be willing to be mentee. And both really benefit. Yeah, it's interesting. I, I want to end every one of my shows on a, on a certain quote. And one of them comes from Madeline um, Albright, our former Secretary sure. of State. And I'm not sure I can say this on the radio, Paul, but I'll try. <laughs> she literally said there should be a special place in hell for women who don't help other women succeed. So as you're a woman, if you're a woman, regardless of your age, you're 20, 30, 40, 50, you can always find somebody to mentor uh, and then also be a mentee uh, and, and find a mentor and be a mentee. What my cur- current young woman I'm mentoring found me on LinkedIn. I have no idea how she found me, but she wants to get in the training development field, and so she right. found me uh, in that area. So great. So it's great to, been great to have you on the, fo- on the show. Any, any special holiday plans since Christmas is around the corner? Well, I'm from Dallas, Texas, Woo-hoo. and I'm going there to see my family with my cast and all. Yeah. So I'm making <laughs> Good luck the trek on the plane. there and then going to Cabo with my oh. mom. So I figured if I had to sit around in a cast, I might as well be in Cabo. Well, you're going to have a funny tan line. <laughs> <laughs> 
This is true. You might have a little bit of a funny tan line. Well, thanks so much for joining me today. I've learned so much from you, and it's such a pleasure to have you on the show. So thanks for those of you that are listening in. Remember that these are recorded, and you can uh, download them on my Podbean site. Um, This is Patty Grimm with Women Kicking Glass. Uh, Remember to listen in every week at 10 o'clock or listen to the download. I'm very excited to be launching this radio show. I have a couple of asks of the audience. One, if you'd like to be on the show, contact me. If you have topics you want to hear about, contact me. If you want to know about my book, go to Amazon and buy my book, Women Kicking, or I'm sorry, not Women Kicking Class, that's my radio show. Quiet Women Never Change History, Be Strong, Stand Out, Stand Up, with the tagline, Let's Go Kick Some Glass. And so I thank you for being here. Great audience. My email is pattygrim at live.com. So it's P-A-T-T-I-E. G-R-I-M-M at live.com or you can always call me at 425-289-6619 since I still have my Seattle number. Thanks for listening and I'll turn it over for Paul for some last, a few last comments and let's go kick some glass. Thanks for listening to Women Kicking Glass, the only radio show on OC Talk Radio dedicated to empowering women to be the best they can be. Listen each week or download the podcast at patty.grim.podbean.com. To reach out to Patty to schedule a speech webinar or to learn more about her leadership and team training, contact Patty at pattygrim at live.com. For more information about her company and her books, have a kicking day. 